Hi guys, I'm Morris here, back in business with a multi-boot video of Windows 98 XP and the latest Windows 11, all running from a NVMe SSD. So far, on this uh, Intel 13th gen configuration, we have a Samsung NVMe SSD hosting Windows 98 and Windows XP. During uh, Windows XP setup, NTLDR was put in charge as a bootloader and uh, by default, NTLDR will create a dual boot menu if uh, detects a bootable DOS partition. In this case, Windows 98 resides, of course, on a DOS bootable partition. Boot MGR, the bootloader that replaced NTLDR since Windows Vista, is not that kind with those partitions, but it will show some respect to the NTLDR bootloader if uh, it is present. We'll get there in a moment. Uh, before that, let's install the latest 64-bit Windows. Adding uh, Windows 11 to the mix is not uh, that complicated. We need the official Windows uh, ISO, then we have to create a bootable USB stick with uh, Rufus. We need Rufus to disable a secure boot and TPM requirements. Once we boot using this custom ISO created with Rufus, the installation doesn't need any special attention. Obviously, we install Windows 11 on the remaining space and we do not touch the existing partitions. This way, NTLDR bootloader won't be removed and can be accessed as earlier version of Windows, while Windows 11 will be made uh, the default boot option. Earlier version of Windows is not probably the best name for a boot menu option. We'll uh, rename it in a moment, but first let's uh, install some drivers. Let's start with the GPU. I'm using a 2006 GeForce 17900GS, which is compatible with Windows 98, but will it work with the latest Windows 11 64-bit? Well, if we use Windows 8 64-bit drivers released in 2015, we can simply install this card in Windows 11. No tweaking is required. How about sound? Is there any sound card that will work in Windows 98 XP and Windows 11? Yes, uh, there is more than one. For example, we could use a sound card with CMI8738 chip. We can uh, even find uh, this card in PCI Express format. Anyway, for this setup, I will use uh, something rather unusual, an M-Audio AudioFile 2496 sound card, which has Windows 98 drivers and Windows 7 64-bit drivers that are working uh, perfectly fine in Windows uh, 11. By the way, this card uh, has also drivers for Windows NT 3.51. Now let's go back to our multi-boot uh, business. Uh, by default, Windows 11 will use the graphical um, interface, Metro style graphical interface. It looks good, but uh, booting in Windows XP or Windows 98 will uh, require a restart since Windows drivers are uh, initialized at this point. That's why we may want to switch to the old text menu style interface, which is much faster. For this, we have to use a BCD edit and type set default boot menu policy legacy. Now we can boot into Windows XP and 98 without restarting, but uh, we may want to rename earlier version of Windows boot entry with uh, something uh, more uh, meaningful, I guess. This is also a BCD edit job. Before making any modifications, as a failsafe measure, we can use a BCD slash export to save our uh, current uh, boot uh, configuration data. Now let's rename the description of NTLDR bootloader from earlier version of Windows to Windows 98 plus XP. So we have to type BCD edit set NTLDR description and uh, what we want to see as an option on our uh, boot menu. And now let's see how it looks on a uh, real screen.
if we want to install only Windows 98 and Windows 11 on the same drive, it's totally doable, but setting up a dual boot menu requires some extra work since Windows 11 will simply ignore any bootable DOS partition. So we have to manually create a boot menu entry for our DOS partition, which is technically possible using only bcd edit commands but it's complicated since we have to extract the boot sector and save it to a file and uh, it doesn't make uh, much sense since we can uh, do the same job uh, with uh, just a few clicks using uh, a uh, tool like easy bcd all we have to do is to add a, a new entries and uh, select ms dos 6 from the list EasyBCD will detect the existing DOS partition and that's the whole process. This will work seamlessly if we have installed Windows 98 first, so it's important to do it uh, in this order. Now it's really easy to select what type of interface we want to use. We don't have to type anything, we just select Use Metro Bootloader if we want a graphical interface. Although BootMGR, the bootloader that is in service with every window since release of Windows Vista, still can uh, technically boot into DOS, EasyBCD won't use this feature. Instead, it will invoke Group for DOS bootloader, which will take over for a millisecond before handing control to MS-DOS. Let's boot into Windows XP. So far, uh, Windows XP is doing just fine on this configuration. Unlike uh, Windows 98, it has NVMe drivers, USB 3 drivers, and uh, GeForce 7900GS. It's a GPU basically made for Windows XP. However, uh, this is not a perfect scenario for Windows 11, where a 2006 7900GS, even if it works, it's obviously not the GPU you may want to use. The ideal multiple uh, setup should use two video cards, one for retro purposes and another one for more demanding stuff. Like in this setup where I have a, a PCI Voodoo 3 along a uh, NVIDIA RTX card. Now let's end the video with some Windows 98 action. So far we have a decent Windows 98 uh, build with uh, video, audio and HCI drivers, but there is no USB support. A PCI to USB adapter would solve this uh, problem, but the only PCI slot is occupied by the sound card. Well, we could use a PCI Express to USB 2 adapter and the problem is solved. This adapter uses a VIA6212 chip, which will be recognized by Windows 98 as a standard USB controller, but it will work only under USB 1.1 protocol with the Windows 98 default drivers. Once we have installed the updated drivers, we do have USB 2.0 available in Windows 98, and uh, now we can get the same transfer speeds like an iPhone 15. Now that we have USB support, it's easy to install some Wi-Fi adapter and go online. There are many early Wi-Fi sticks compatible with Windows 98. And this one that I'm using right now with a Zydus chip is really easy to install. Fun fact, the software will automatically connect to the first unencrypted Wi-Fi network in range. And guess what? I do have uh, such a Wi-Fi connection. I know, I know, it's unsecure, but uh, don't worry, it's not my uh, main connection. Before going online for the first time, we have to use Internet Connection Wizard and specify that we are going to connect using a uh, local area network. And uh, that's the whole process. No other settings are required in this case. We don't even have to open control panel. Thanks for watching, uh, stay tuned for the next video, I think this setup is great for some benchmarking since we are using the very same hardware in three different operating systems.